many of you probably have used these devices that allow you to speak into the device and it recognizes what you say or does it. Um, I know a lot of us, you know, me being from Jackson, Mississippi, I'm a Southern girl. Many of you are from Mississippi or from the South. Uh, you notice that a lot of these things, they just simply don't work as well for certain groups of people, um, namely those who have a Southern accent, Southern draw, you know, whatever. So. I want to talk a little bit more about why that is exactly. This is actually a video uh, meeting call that I was on uh, using Google Hangouts. And this is not Darth Vader. This is me. This is my outline. This is what it looks like for people who have darker skin. Um, the sensors in the video, uh, when you look into your laptop, the whole point of having a video call is to see the person's face, right? So this is the, totally defeating the purpose. Um, but this doesn't happen for my lighter skinned colleagues. So, I'm, you know, there's a lot that goes into the design of these products and did we really account for all cases and for all types of people using the technology. You may have seen uh, Amazon in the news recently about uh, being criticized for some of its facial recognition technology, Ashley, um, saying that it doesn't work really well for group, certain groups of people and certain genders. Um, uh, specifically um, African-American females, I think that um, you have to consider, you know, how were these things designed? Who was actually sitting at the table? Literally, who had a seat at the table when people were designing this type of product? You think about facial recognition, voice recognition, video calls, and countless other types of technology out there that exist that are intended for all these groups of people, but they don't work as well. Imagine having a voice or uh, facial recognition or a voice recognition um, device that helps you with security. And imagine if you lock up the wrong person because you didn't anticipate this type of group. Um, these are really real issues that are, you will start to see these come to light and a lot of public policy being developed around these things. So the number one reason why people, uh, hiring managers at large tech companies and small tech companies say that they don't have this equal representation in their technology development is because they say, well, we can't find them. Well, now let me take a step back. I'm not talking about diversity in technology uh, for things that are really intended for certain groups of people, such as kids, toys, or um, it's just like going to the petite section. Um, I'm, I'll fellow two, five, two and under people. You know what I mean? Like you really like those things that are really d designed and developed for you. But I'm speaking about these items and technology that were developed for all types of people, but not really. So I will say, I think tech companies can do a lot better job at recruiting and putting forth money, time, and effort towards finding the right people to make their talent pools more diverse. But on the other hand, I get it. There are not that many people who look like me who do what I do. And when I say that, I mean an African-American female uh, PhD in computer engineering whose expert is artificial intelligence. Recently, there was a study done by the Society of Women Engineers and the National Society of Black Engineers about a particular group, which, of course, I'm a part of, um, women of color in engineering. Um, this is just an example I use, but um, they point out that out of the entire talent pool of tech uh, developers and tech experts, um, only 3% are African-American female. Um, there are even uh, other numbers that aren't as exciting for people uh, of minority groups and underrepresented groups, um, even people from the Southeast. A lot of people, when they ask, oh, where are you from? I'm from Mississippi, you know, we get this bad rap, right? People want to know, oh, how was that growing up in a racist society and all of this? And I'm like, well, it's not any different than the society you grew up in, you know? So um, <laughs> I think, uh, a lot of times, too, people equate um, Southern draw and you speaking slow to having a lack of intelligence. And I've experienced this. I've worked all over the country, um, New York City to California, overseas, and I get these things all the time. So again, there is a lack of people, but we do need to work on the pipeline issue. And how do we get more people into the pipeline? So this is me. Uh, it's my mom. It's a very old picture. It's from middle school. Um, growing up, I grew up in a house full of women. Uh, my mother, my grandmother, my sister, so we pretty much had a we do everything type of mentality. I remember when my mom, uh, I was actually a quiet, uh, soft-spoken introvert. Um, I like to think I was a cool nerd though, you know. 
Uh, I was at the top of my class, and I, I played sports and music, so I thought I was pretty cool. But uh, this is me receiving a lot of awards. I was usually at the top of my class in science and technology and, and, and uh, math. My mom went out on a limb when I was like nine, eight or nine, and bought us a, a Packard Bell computer. Uh, this was back when Windows 3.1 was the very, like one of the very early versions of Windows. I know kids don't know anything about this um, and dial up and all of that, but this is where we used to be, three and a half inch floppy disk. Um, and my mom used to uh, learn typing with Mavis Beacon. Uh, she had a whole suite of products. I think she's still teaching typing today, amazing. And so um, I think that this was very instrumental. And you think about it, my mom sold equity into me at a very early age, and she didn't even know it. Uh, think about how many other people didn't have this opportunity to learn about computers at the age of eight or nine. And when we talk about equity, we're talking about giving everyone the resources that they need to be successful. And that may not, those resources may not be the same for every type of person or every group of people. So that's what we mean when we say equity versus equality. So in high school, middle school, I actually, despite having the Encyclopedia Britannicas that we ordered, despite having the Packard Bell computer, I still didn't really know what engineering was until my eighth grade science teacher, uh, Miss Portia Powell, which happens to, she, I haven't seen her since eighth grade. She surprised me in the lobby. Here she is today. Um, <laughs> you just raise your hand. <laughs> From People's Middle School, I was so happy to see her, but I didn't know what engineering was until she pulled me to the side one day and she said, hey, I think you really should check out this engineering, summer engineering camp, uh, which ha happened to be at Mississippi State. Um, you know, I had attended summer camps before, Jackson State here and there at the libraries, um, into all types of sports and things, but I never tried anything quite like this. Once I went to that camp, I knew from that moment on I wanted to be a computer engineer. I found out that computer engineering actually means that you work on a, a combination of hardware and software. So you kind of control everything, and I'm, I'm a control freak, so I really <laughs> like that. So I think this just totally fascinated me, and I just wanted to go all in on it. And again, think about equity. Think about someone who didn't have the parent to sow into them or someone who didn't have the teacher to sow into them and give them those resources that they needed. I needed to know what engineering was. I needed to have a background in computers. I needed to have a good math and science foundation. And this is what my, these opportunities allotted me. So there's a study done by Microsoft that says that um, girls seem to lose interest in STEM as they get older, even though you see that from middle school to high school, um, actually on to young women. Uh, young women, they think that coding jobs just aren't for them. A lot of them uh, even, they feel powerful doing STEM uh, from high school to young women, but if you don't catch them between high school, middle school and high school, you lose a lot of people off the bat. So again, we're talking about, we're already losing potential tech experts at the middle school level, and this is a problem. So I kind of naively decided to major in computer engineering um, at Mississippi State. I had no idea that I would be uh, the only female, sometimes the only African American, sometimes the only American in my classes. Um, I'm glad no one told me that. I also didn't know that my very first coding program, I would feel behind. The very first, first coding class, everyone else knew how to code except for me. And imagine, I went to Murrah High School. I took an AP uh, computer science course. Don't know what we learned in there, but I did take one. But I still didn't have enough resources to get me where I needed to be by the time I reached undergrad. Again, think about how many people in my class, freshman year, dropped out of the program because of this first class. So moving on to graduate school, I decided to major uh, and become a subject matter expert in artificial intelligence. Um, and people ask me, okay, why get a PhD? Well, being a, getting a PhD means that you know more about anybody else in that particular subject matter um, area. And getting a PhD would allow me to have a lot more opportunities. It's basically something saying that, hey, here's a stamp, she knows her stuff. Uh, now, not saying that you need a degree to be a tech expert, but think about all the tech companies that are developing this very, uh, these technologies that we use every day. This is one thing that they use to filter people out by. So again, we want to make sure that we're 
telling people this so that they know, hey, you probably want to pursue this PhD or advanced degree, or even at the undergrad level, so you can be considered in the pool. So I had no idea, again, in graduate school that it would take me three times to pass my qualifying exams. I had no idea that I would be told by a couple of different professors that I would never finish the program. And I also didn't know just I would have to start over after three years because my advisor and I didn't agree on certain things and start my research all over. So again, very challenging at Georgia Tech, but I, I managed to get through it because I had really great mentors and people, again, who were sowing that equity. I needed mentorship. I needed people who had a support system. Even while undergrad, I joined the sorority, Delta Sigma Theta sorority, because I wanted to be around women who looked like me because outside of that environment, I was always around people who didn't look like me. So again, what sort of equity you think about can be sold into people to help them continue on through the journey. So you may wonder, like, what is artificial intelligence anyway? I'm pretty sure a lot of people are wondering that. So pretty much all these technologies I've talked about, that is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence involves a computer or machine that acts, thinks, moves, or talks like a human. Um, it can also be thought of as machine learning, or in other words, taking large, large amounts of data and trying to find patterns in them so I know what kind of songs you like on Amazon or I know what type of videos should pop up on your YouTube ads. This is what um, artificial intelligence is. So again, I had no idea that artificial intelligence would be so popular. I just knew I had a passion for it. Um, but I just happened to be blessed to go into that field, which is really taking off and blowing up today. But how much more empowered would I have been if I would have known that this field would have been something to take off in. So I think another reason is that we lack mentorships even at that later stage um, in order to sow equity. Now you think about intersectionality. I'm black, I'm a female, I'm a computer engineer, I have a PhD, I'm from Mississippi. I don't know what more different things you can combine together to come up with a more unique person. So there are often challenges with that. Um, and trying to find out where do I belong? Which group do I fit in with? And maybe that's the answer to that is, is you just may not fit in the way you, you think you may. Everybody's different. Everybody has their own unique talents and stories. But I do want to point out, since this is Valentine's Day, I want to talk about just dating as a tech expert. <laughs> so this is usually how this goes, right? Him, so what do you do? Me, I'm a computer engineer. Him. Okay, you fix computers. Me, well, not exactly. Him, so you're in IT? Me, well, not really. 15 minutes later, sad face. <laughs> so <laughs> this is usually how the dates go. But I think uh, regardless of that, you, you think about it's not easy being in that situation. It's not easy being somebody who's so different. Again, it's another thing that knocks people off and causes people to leave the field and do something else, even when they're um, postgraduate level. So the bottom line I want you all to realize is that lack of equity, lack of sewing into people, equals lack of diversity in your technology. It's a firsthand experience that I've been through with a personal journey, and you are experiencing it every day. So my equity contributions include uh, you know, coming back to Jackson, sewing into Mississippi, speaking engagements. I sit on boards within the College of Engineering at Mississippi State University, uh, also through many panels at Amazon, which is where I work now, um, after having uh, been the CTO of a startup that we sold to Amazon um, called PartPick. Uh, but I also live in Atlanta, and I do a lot of uh, diversity and inclusion events there. One thing I'm most proud of is uh, the nonprofit, The Bean Path, which I started um, towards the end of last year. What we do is we pretty much give technical expertise um, in order to grow networks and fertilize communities. Um, this is a picture of us at our tech office hours at the Mega Everest Library. Um, we try to target people that, one, are too intimidated to use technology. Um, two, they may know about technology, but they have no idea. They have no one to show them how to use it. Or three, they just have no idea that these technologies exist. And this is a problem, right? Because technology is in every aspect of what we do. It's in our businesses, it's in our barbershops, it's in our beauty salons. Um, you need to know how to use it. So one way I want to sow equity is that providing people of all different backgrounds, all different races, all different ages, access to people that can help them on the technology side. 
We also give away grants and scholarships to community organizations and youth and have youth programs for them. So the next time you ask, why doesn't this thing work for me? Consider this, what's your equity contribution? Thank you. <laughs>